hi guys it's Thea welcome back to Garden Goddess Tarot <laughs> wow I'm I'm so funny I was hesitating like I'm all set up I got ready I've been thinking about it it was all set up and ready to make this video and then I started to hesitate I started to be like oh no this might be too personal this might be too weird I don't like is this a good idea and then I you know start to overthink things like you do I'm just uh, lighting some of my favorite incense at the moment. Forced patchouli, it's, it's the way it goes. Um, anywho, so I'm sitting here, like, I kid you not, I've been sitting in this seat for like 20 minutes just thinking <laughs> about, about, about who knows what, you know, running through the possibilities. Like, if only I had a way to, <laughs> to see if this is a good idea or not. Lol, there's like a hundred tarot decks in this room. <laughs> So I grabbed, I grabbed a tarot deck and I asked it, I said, hey, dear tarot deck, how, what is the energy around the way that this video is going to be received if I were to make and publish it? That was my question. Very clear, very detailed, <laughs> very, very, you know, fleshed out. Anyway, I pulled justice. Which to me just screams, this is a Majors Only deck by the way, so I was really, I was going in, I was going in for the big energy. <laughs> anyway, Justice, what I put out is the energy that will come back to me, which is basically just a clear message saying like, listen, you don't have to make it if you don't want to, but if you do make it, know that being open and authentic and speaking what it is you want to speak is the best way to encourage others to do the same. And that way kind of really enriches the community with which we all exist here on TarotTube. So I, th I thought, of course, this is going, that's, so that's that's a green flag for me. And actually like, look at her wings. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hold this up long enough for you to see? There she is, she's just a big old green flag. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just, I know there's, that's interesting, the background, we do have some, um, some silence going on in the background, but at the same time, they're silent because they're listening. Like, well, that's the audience, right? She is standing in the forefront. She is the center of attention and she is the dispeller of truth and the nature of being. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> As you can see, I am here. I'm making the video. If it ends up getting way too private, I might make it a members only video. So if this is a members only video, hey. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, if not, then I, I kept it, I kept it concise and tight, and it's it's ready, it's ready for everybody. So I can't I can't say now what it's gonna be, which is interesting that you know again this is the the paradox of time, you know at what level <laughs> this video made it out. Very curious. Lots to think about. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna clear the space. I want to make it really cozy for all parts of me. Welcome up for you, and I just, you know, a little bit of smoke. So, today's video is going to be me talking about my experience with astral travel. <laughs> now, I say, it's funny because I've never really in my life called what I do astral travel, but I've been reading some books lately about spirit flight and that kind of out of body, um, inner self exploration that I've kind of realized I've always done, but I just, I never called it that. So we're gonna unpack a little bit about my, <laughs> my practice, my journey, my, my experience with this particular form of, <sighs> sometimes it's through meditation, other times it's through varying other modes of altered consciousness, sometimes right before like sleep other times with the help of substances like nothing nothing like particularly aggressive nothing illegal <laughs> I don't I don't I wouldn't say that I partake in anything particularly um harsh in that regard I'm not I'm not against it but I just just don't um but anyway sometimes it's it's through uh through meditation sometimes it's through um that like liminal area of like semi-consciousness before sleep which I've had like a great deal of success with that's probably the best my 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 preferred method but it's like really kind of limited to the time of day in which <laughs> I'm going to sleep and then yeah sometimes through the help of um I've got some salves flying ointments creams um scents um inhaling certain 
scents can be transportive as well for me specifically, which we'll all talk about probably. <laughs> I've got no script. I'm just going, flying off the seat of my pants here. Um, and then I'll, through meditation, repetition, and um, trying to clear the mind of anything outside of the goal of where it is that I'm trying to go. So. So that's that's the game plan. That's the that's the syllabus for for today's video. So um, I'm not like a tarot might be around, as we said. I, I pulled a card at the beginning, but it's not. This isn't necessarily going to be a tarot related video. This is kind of a practice video. It's gonna be open up to everybody, hopefully. Um, just kind of being honest and transparent about the things that I do. When I say I always I have a habit. I say you know I do the thing. But I never explain what that thing is, so it's because it's, because it's, it's really vulnerable. This is me like opening up my, my my chest and putting putting my insides on the table for everybody to look at and go ooh, and then form their own judgments about. And I'm I'm hesitant about being open to receiving those judgments, but in the interest of you know putting out into the world what it is I want to experience from others in an open, vulnerable kind of way. That's, that's the plan. That's the plan for today. This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Are we ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I think. Okay. Well, I have some coffee. Gotta have coffee. Okay. I got my beads and we are good. Okay. So astral travel, the essentially like there's, there's, there's like spirit flight, astral travel. I myself kind of they're, they're like one in the same in the way I experience them. I don't necessarily, um, in my, in my readings, um, it's a lot about the witch's Sabbath and kind of, you know, that's that particularly timely ritual and, and, and collective meeting space. I don't do that. I don't go there. That's not, that's not my flavor. I'm a, I'm a solitary person. I like to keep it that way. I don't think I'd ever be a part of a coven or group that does stuff together. It's just at the time, not my personal flavor. I'm really, my goals are elsewhere. And whether or not I'm entirely clear on what my particular goals are, I know what they're not. <laughs> and they're not that right now. Um, so um, I guess that's the main distinction. When I, when I do, when I go places and I don't take my body with me, <laughs> um, it's for other purposes and it's always with the intent of being alone, except for like one situation, which I might touch on a little bit. And We'll, we'll unpack that a little bit later, actually. That's interesting, come to think of it. That's, huh, okay. I've kind of touched on how we get there with the sleep, meditation, and um, substance-assisted um, journey. Um, the, the substances I use, usually before sleep, the best way, the most effective way that I tend to get where I go um, is before sleep. I'm in kind of that like in-between sleeping and waking state, and I throw in some, I've got a, a, a a tea mixture. Um, the the blend that I used to use contained wormwood <laughs> until they stopped putting wormwood in it. So I need to get myself some more wormwood to supplement. I've been using mugwort as well, but it's I, I a, a very light <laughs> infusion of these herbs um, taken in hot tea before bed is a surefire way to have the most like lucid and visceral experience in these places that I intentionally direct myself to go. It's not like dreaming where it's like letting yourself kind of go wherever, see what happens. What you dream is what you dream, right? It's a, like, I have places that I'm going to go. And this, it's like doing these little things is like the act of buying a ticket and getting on a train. Like it's like they're intentional actions chosen for a specific result, I guess. Whereas I get like, instead of just like, you know, meditating, roaming around on the astral plane, just kind of like seeing what there is to see. Like some meditations you do, you just, you get yourself into that clear headspace and you're out there and you're just, you're, you're waiting to receive what's out there, what it is, like see what there is to see, kind of see what messages are like ready to come to you. For the most part, I have, I've got an itinerary. <laughs> I have a list. I have specific places that I'm going and there are specific things I'm doing when I'm getting there. So. That's like the context as well for this particular version of, of travel. Um, so yes, the tea, the tea is the best way before bed. I also have, like I said, the flying ointment, which is a mixture of baneful plants in a um, salve sort of suspension that I rub on um, pressure points just to, I don't use a lot. It's just, it's almost, the, the act of doing it is almost as powerful as, <laughs> 
the ingredients themselves. And it's more the allies of those particular plant spirits that I kind of use in kind of harmony with me as vehicles for transport, as opposed to their like, like chemical effects on the body, if that makes sense. But flying ointments, <laughs> got those. And I tend to use them not necessarily before bed. I do the tea method before bed and I use the ointments themselves kind of if I'm doing a like seated meditating based trip. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just the old regular meditation for when I don't feel like using the substances. So that's kind of, that's the, that's the scene that's, the scene is set. Sometimes I'll do a tarot reading before I start as well, just to kind of get grounds for, you know, what it is I'm gonna be up to, but most of the time I know. And a lot of the time it doesn't matter. And one of the places that I go has tarot decks in it already. Shocker. <laughs> also, I want to be clear that this, where it is that I go, like this is different than like, when I say mind palace and inner temple, that's a different thing. That's like an ephemeris place that I can go, but it's, it's somewhere that doesn't exist in the real world and these other places that I go, which I will talk about <laughs> eventually, I'm just trying to frame it in a, in a sensible way. This is very difficult. Something that kind of exists um, non-materially, but like it actually, it does, it's, it's weird. I, it's hard to say. Anyway, um, <laughs> getting all, all lost. The, the inner temple, the mind palace is something that kind of exists out of the plane of the material world. But where I go when I'm actual traveling, these are real places, okay? Um, the one of the places I've been before, two of the places I have not been before in physical body, but I know they're real. <laughs> I know they exist. They are tangible places in the world and I go to them. One of them kind of is a little bit in the past. It's kind of an eternal summer kind of situation. I'll explain that one in a little bit more detail. But the other one, which I go to the most, <laughs> because it's like it's like home base for me. Um, it exists. It's real. It is current. It is, exists as it exists now, in this particular present timeline. <laughs> and it's like a physical, real place. But I've never actually, in my real body, ever actually been there. But I know it intimately. I know where everything is. I know the layout. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you a little tour of it. It's the place I go to most. And that was kind of, it was the idea that really sparked the need for me to create this video. It's a place, it's a house. It's a small little house on a little island in the middle of the sea. I'm sure you can guess where if you know anything about me. Um, or you might, you might guess wrong. You might guess wrong. <laughs> Who knows? Guesses down below. Anyway, this little house I'm, I'm I'm intimately familiar with it, and in my like in my bones and in my spirit, I own this place. This place is mine. It is home. It is a real place, and it is mine. In some layer of time and space somewhere, okay. <laughs> Stick with me on this one. So you're walking up to it. It's it's quite up the sides of the slope. So the the. The island, the little, the little town at the edge of the island has many steps <laughs> all the way up to the top of it. And this is quite near the top. It's not all the way up at the top, but it's, it's, you know, the top, the top second, third, um, of kind of bowl around, around the port. Um, it's a white house and you, um, it faces to the, um, oh, let's say that's east, south. The southeast is where the windows kind of face once you get up upstairs. I'll I'll talk about the view when we when we get there, but we're just we're coming up. There's a big blue step that you step up into the main like through the through the blue door um, into the main area and then there's three more steps up into the main the main room on the base floor. Um, if you look directly to your left, there is that's not left, that's right. If you look directly to your right, there's the little living room seating area. The ground is stone, it's rough stone, and it has kind of, not super thick, but it is grouted, which is interesting for inside the house, but it's grouted. But the rough stones have been kind of worn down. The house is kind of old. It's it's probably it's a couple hundred years old at this point. Um, bits of it are new. There's bits of it that have been updated, more so upstairs, but downstairs, like that floor, you can tell it's been walked on for a very, very long time. Um, there is a couch on the left side of the room that faces out the window. There's a tiny dining room table under the window on the right side. And then if you look straight ahead, um, 
there's a, a fireplace with a big blue mantle on it and that's where I keep my books, my tarot decks. They're all in that room. Well, there's a couple upstairs next to the bed, but <laughs> but the most, the majority of them that are there with me are on that mantle please, um, piece. And there's a few pieces of art hanging on the wall next to it and there is a like a knotted rug of various colors on the on the floor um, in between the couch and the dining table which has fresh flowers on it currently. Um, oh, and there's a big bowen villa that grows outside up the side of that window as well, which you see as you come around the corner. It's a corner house. <laughs> um, so when you look to the left, as you're, you're walking in the front door, um, directly in front of you, there's the, the tiny bathroom. Um, it's very small. It's just basically um, a toilet, a shower, there's no bath, um, and a little sink to wash your hands in and a little mirror. Um, but then when you look to the, when you're in the main part of the room, you look to the left is a little kitchenette and it's really like, <laughs> it's like a th three and a half foot section of countertop, a sink, a couple cabinets, um, and there's a little tiny gas range, <laughs> like the tiniest one. There's like two burners on it. Enough just to, you know, heat food and, um, you know, water, make tea, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's a plug at the back. Um, it's just a one, a little one basin sink and then there's cupboards underneath it. And directly to like the left of the counter space is a staircase that goes up and wraps around to upstairs. And that's it. So it's like a very tiny, like concise and tight, um, but it has everything you need. Like it, it's, it's cozy. It feels perfect. Um, if you go in and up around the stairs, which are painted blue and white every other stair all the way up to the top, and it kind of curves around the kitchen. And then when you get to the top of the stairs, along, oh sorry, along the side of the stairs is art as well. I've got a couple of beautiful framed prints along there. Um, you get to the top and then you're in the bedroom. There's a big, well how big, it's a queen size bed, but it's on the floor. Um, there's no um, box spring or bed frame. It's just on the floor and then there's a big um there's netting over the top of it which is great <laughs> because i like to sleep with the windows open and the windows so you come up and then you're um you're facing this bed and then when you look to the um right my left and right are so bad there's that that wall is all it's windows but the two windows in the middle are actually doors that open and they're blue and they go out onto the terrace and the terrace is like a dark really warm wood color and there's a tiny blue table with two blue chairs and a view <laughs> the view is incredible um, i'll talk about that in a second um, next to the bed there is a tiny table which has one little drawer in it in which i keep a tarot and an oracle deck um, and then there's a little hook on the bed on the wall next to the bed where i hang my beads um, i also keep candles and incense in that um that nightstand as well there's a big old circular rug on the floor under like between the bed and the windows to outside. Um, there's a little closet actually too. That's where my clothes live. <laughs> okay, so we're on the terrace and there's the tiny little, it's like a little bistro set. It's 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 made of both wood and metal. The chairs, the little folding chairs. Um, they're like, it's like a light blue color. Um, almost like a, like a turquoise light blue. Um, and yeah, they look out over, you can see kind of the ring of houses that go up the side of the, um, it's not really mountain, it's just like the hill that the, the town's sort of situated on. And then in front of you is is the harbor and the sea. And if you look kind of out and to the, to the left, it's open sea. And then there's another island a little further to the, um, in, in the east, out that way. Um, but directly in front, on the other side of the harbor is more land from this island that kind of curves around. So it's, um, it, there's a lot of dimension, a lot of depth. There's so much to look at. It feels cozy. It doesn't feel like imposing, like you're looking out at the abyss. There's like a, a really, um, a comforting wholeness about the way the land kind of holds you in your, in this space on the side of this hill over the water. And this, because that's the east that way, the sun comes up over that land. So the, the sun doesn't pop out of the pop out of, of the sea in the morning. It pops up over over the mountain in front of you, and it's <laughs> it's wonderful. It's one of my favorite things in the morning, watching the sun come up over the peak of that mountain. So okay, <laughs> so in excruciating detail, that is my house. That is where I go. I go there to actually a lot of the time I just chill out. Sometimes I read. Sometimes I pull tarot. Sometimes I just sit on that balcony. Sometimes I cook in the kitchen. Sometimes 
there's people around. Like I never, I never let them in. It's my place. So far, no one has been in but me. Um, but you can hear them. I interact with them through the window, especially on the main floor, out the windows onto the street, and you can smell. <laughs> you can smell the sea. First thing, you can smell the incense that I usually have going inside the place. You can also occasionally smell the bin bags that people leave at the corner down the street, <laughs> which is kind of irritating. So it's, it's very, again, very visceral experience. It is, it's sensory in all the senses. It's, it's, it's so real. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, a various cacophony of smells and sounds, the, the, the sound of life happening in front of you and around you, people passing by, speaking in Greek. Calimeras, Yasus, <laughs> everywhere, right? Um, but but there is, it, it's a quiet retreat when I go, you know, when I'm not cooking in the kitchen or reading or pulling tarot. And I have like pulled tarot readings while I'm there with the decks that are there. So I, if <laughs> you can, you can use tarot decks you don't actually have. <laughs> Pro tip. Um, but yeah, you can pull, pull cards there get readings, get messages from outside of your physical space if you want. Remember, sky's the limit. This is, this is your experience. And I think in sharing, in sharing this in, in great excruciating detail, <laughs> my main goal is to just inspire the freedom to make your practice, the things you do, the places you go, make them yours, make them, tailor them to what you need. They don't, they shouldn't look like anybody else's. For the longest time, I didn't think I was doing anything right because everything I did did not look like anything anyone else did. <laughs> the, 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 the things that I feel like for me are pure magic that hold power, that have the ability to create my reality for me, don't look like the things that other people use and they should not. <laughs> and I often do not like to use the word should. You know, I abhor the word should, but I think in this case, I will, I will legitimize its presence by saying that what it is you do, where you find your power should not be a carbon copy of anyone else's ever. And do not feel that because what you do does not look like what other people experience and do, that doesn't mean it is not valid, doesn't mean it does not have power, it does not mean it does not work for you, okay? You get to choose which labels you would like. I'm still in that <laughs> weird cyclone of trying to figure out if I want a label at all or one that fits, that empowers, that gives me what I need. Right now I have not landed on one, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, I just do what I do for the reasons I need to do them. People can call me what they want. <laughs> I've been called lots of things. Call me whatever you want, just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's, that is the first and the main place that I tend to go to. And that one is more so kind of a recreational during the day type of meditation, that one. Sometimes I'll go before bed, but not always, usually it's a daytime thing. So that place, that is my place. Good luck getting there. <laughs> if you wanna try and visit me, go for it. <laughs> I've got, <laughs> good luck getting in, but um, you've got to kind of know where it is to get there. So <laughs> hit me up if you'd like an invite, but otherwise, no, it's, it's safe, it's secure, it's my place. So, so yeah, that is one of the places that the me that does not reside in my body likes to frequent. There's two other places that I tend to go. One is a place in the woods somewhere. And this one is kind of tied to a, um, a younger, or I, I first went there when I was young. I was, I was a child when I first started going to this place outside of my physical body. But this is the one place that I have indeed been to in my physical body. So there is kind of ties to my physical self in this way. Um, I went for the first time when I was about, how old was I, like nine? Nine or 10 years old, so very, open-minded, impressionable, but full of change kind of age. Um, but ever since I've had such a tie to this place that I've returned to it often. Um, and I think because I have been to it in real life, there is 
that it's kind of locked in time kind of way. So it's a place in the past and it's kind of eternal summer. <laughs> it's never winter there whenever I go, which is interesting. Um, whereas when I go to my house, the seasons change. <laughs> it's a very like a seasonal, um, seasonally changing place, which is very interesting that like when I go, it's not, it's not just like the same day every day. It's not like a groundhog day situation or anything. It's different. The weather's different. It's very like unique and interesting. And that just really grinds home for me that that place is, is real. It's a real physical place and that I am going there <laughs> from, from, from here. It's, it, it's, it's wild. Um, but the other place, so in the woods somewhere, it's on the edge of a, it's a forest, but it's also a forest that kind of ends at a cliff that overlooks, again, water. We got, there's, there's a common theme. All of these are high places. None of them are ground level. All of them are above water in some way or other, which is, I think, very important for me, which is, I guess, fun, something to unpack. But usually there is the presence of water, a view of some sort, so air, um, earth, usually in the form of a mountain. And then I feel like the fire kind of fits in, in other unique ways in various places. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's in the woods, it's at the edge of a cliff, but the trees go right up to the edge of the cliff. And I think they're mostly um, white pine trees that go all the way up. And then below there's, it, there's a steep drop that goes down to a very still kind of river that flows out to a lake. And then um, maybe 20 or 30 feet of empty space and then you hit the other side of a cliff that goes up and it's also forest so that's this place <laughs> and it's quiet and there's no people you can hear the wind rushing through the needles of the white pine and the water flowing along in front it's it's very serene it's kind of this place is specifically more of a place of escape of a place that i i often retreated to when i was a child when i needed that calm kind of serene inner inner peace <laughs> i would go to this place <laughs> and i found myself often returning to it and i think this place is also tied to a very intense experience of of love for the first time in a weird way so that kind of also really like solidified it as as a as a very personally important kind of place so there's a strong tie for love there's an appreciation for the absolute stunning natural beauty of it and it just makes it a place that I do return to over and over and over and over again when I need that when I need to just sit with my legs dangling over the edge of that cliff that's quite high up um kind of surrounded by the comfort of these white pine trees and the ability to breathe the air of the view in front of me it's just really, it's, it's calming and grounding and it's the place that I tend to, tend to retreat to for that purpose. So that's that one. That's, that's the second place. The third place is a place that I experienced when I was a bit older. Um, and it was very interesting. This one is very um, atmospherically different than the other two. The other two are very, um, one is literally outside. The other one is inside, but has a very, it's, it's outside coated with those, that wall of windows that opens up you're both inside and outside at the same time. So you're like outside, but you're you're held and protected. This other one is entirely inside of a apartment building. Um, the apartment building is dark, not well lit. Um, it's always either nighttime or raining when I go there. Um, and it's not my apartment. I'm a visitor at it. And there's other spirits that live there. And I interact with them when I'm there. So this is this is the one that gets weird. And I, I'm the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like unpacking it. But it's which is wild because I've been going to this place repeatedly for like decades at this point. Um, and this is one I always go to right before bed. This is when I'm about to fall asleep. I go to this place, which is a wild place to go, like some random apartment building in some unnamed city somewhere. Probably North American because they speak English and it's a very looks very North American. But I couldn't tell you if it's in the states or it's in Canada. I don't know where it is. Um, so. But it's, a, but it's a real place. <laughs> but I don't know where it is, but it's a real place. Um, it's sometimes, it's, it's, it's inhabited by a couple, an older couple, um, kind of maybe early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, probably late 50s, I never asked how old they are. Um, um, and sometimes just the husband's there, sometimes they're both there. It's never just the wife though which is interesting. Um, and usually I end up coming in through the window or like the, um, there's like a, like an escape 
ladder <laughs> on the side of this apartment building that I that I come in through and it's metal like it's a, it's a metal escape ladder and the balcony on the side of this apartment building is also is also metal and I come in that way and it's usually raining so I'm always wet which is irritating I'm like wet and cold um, so and I and I come in and I and I interact I don't know their names which is wild but but we hang out so I I have interacted with these whether they're like guardians or um, you know friendly obviously they're not they're not malicious in any <laughs> in any way but they're you know they're just you know people I go and hang out with have a drink with spend time with but it's so weird that I always come in through the window and not through the door but it's normal like, I do it all the time I'm always there and I don't know why I just go so anyway there's a there's a the kitchen kind of is attached to the living room and then there's the door out to the like main hallway of the apartment um, and then you go down this way and there's a hallway that goes to the bathroom and bedroom and there's like a little extra like storage room down that way too but usually we're just hanging out in the living room or like at, there's a little um island that juts out between where like the kitchen is and the living room and we like sit at the bar and like talk and have a drink and smoke which is actually interesting as well because I do I tend to when I'm when I'm when I'm traveling um I'm all, I always smoke but I never I don't smoke in real life which is which is interesting very weird but I'm always I'm always smoking <laughs> so yeah it's very interesting so this yeah so that that is the other place and I tend to go there and hang out with them um before before bed <laughs> and and all of doing that so Anyway, that, those are like my, those are the main places that I tend to go outside of when I'm specifically working in Inner Temple and or like Mind palace -y kind of space that is non-tangible. These are three real life places that I go <laughs> for whatever reasons. And it's kind of, it's, it's, it's it, it just happens. It's natural. I don't, I don't, I don't make a big point to do it. It's just something I do. I don't have to think about doing it because it just happens I just do it. I don't know why. <laughs> and I always kind of have, like as I said, the, the apartment place um, I've been going to for decades. My house, probably about five years. Um, and the other place, literally like, like probably, <laughs> oh, like, like, like 25 to you know 27 years i've been going to the other place so like they're they're familiar they're they're just as real as going to like your aunt's house like i know what's in the drawers <laughs> i know i know where to find things like it's 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 a place and i go and i don't know why i just do <laughs> so yeah anyway having interactions <laughs> on out 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 of my body but in spirit and I don't know, like, based on the books I've been reading lately, I don't know if I should be putting more effort and control into making certain things happen when I'm in these places or just like let my interactions there be what they are is, is natural and normal enough also. So, so yeah, that is my experience astral traveling. <laughs> um, I would be very, very curious and interested to hear if you've done anything similar or if you have places you go or if you've never thought of the things that you've done as that kind of astral traveling because I know people talk like they throw at the I said people but occasionally online in witchy spaces you'll hear people talking about oh you know the on the astral plane and you know oh spirit flight and you know the witch's sabbat and like all this other stuff and you're like oh I don't I don't do any of that I don't I don't astral travel and then I start to think about it for a second and it's like hang on <laughs> it's just because it looks different doesn't mean that it's not it so, anywho, there we go. It's not like I'm getting stuff done. It's not like I'm, but I'm not, I'm not really a, like a, like a work motivated person. So I think, you know, in, in, in going these places to, to do stuff and make contracts and, and, you know, do as it's like a business transaction. It's not really me anyway. I'm just, I'm just there for the vibes. I'm there to chill. I'm there to get to know the people who are there, I guess, in the case of the one to escape kind of in the other and then to have some place that is mine <laughs> in the third but but as I said these are real places that I go to and I'm familiar with but the me that goes there is not in in physical form so 
anyway, that's what I do. <laughs> and I guess, is that, is that all that I wanted to cover? I'm trying to, I'm just trying to like wrap it all up in my brain and like, like think. Think about, about the experience and like, I don't want to like wax poetic about how beneficial it is because it's just something I do and I don't know what it would be like if I didn't do it, but I do do it. Just as, as habit, as routine, as, I guess, and then you could throw ritual in there, but it's not like, I don't have to, you know, set up and try. It's not something I have to, oh, remember to do this thing, set an alarm. It's like, no, it just happens. So anyway, as I said, very curious about your experience on the Asheville. Am I like way off base? Also, let me know. I'm kind of open to constructive criticism, not criticism, but just like, like opinions and input, but also I'm also reserving the right to not be open <laughs> into things because these places are like, in like they're so, they're so special and they're so personal and so tied to my like visceral spiritual experience that I'm not really like willing to have other people telling me I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> right? And like, I don't, I don't think I am doing it wrong because it works, so. Anyway, just throwing that out there, but I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm throwing some feelers out. Have you had similar experiences? Do you do similar things? Is there repeated places that you go to in these liminal states? Um, I'd be curious to know. <laughs> so, and like, what do you do there? Like you go there, great. Like, like I, I'm, is there, is there things that you're doing to get done? Are you making packs? Are you um, like, is, is there transactional interactions going on? Or are you just chilling? I'd like to know. Very curious. So anyway, that's my experience. That is, we'll, we'll leave it at that. That's my experience with astral travel for now. As I said, maybe as I, as I start to think about it more, I will try and put a little bit more intention into where and why I go, but like, I think it's fine. There's nothing I want right now, you know? Maybe I'll make the one place up nice in order to start inviting guests, certain other spirit related guests. They're welcome anytime, <laughs> those ones. But um, but yeah, no, so far they're just, they're just my places that I go, that I keep. So yeah, anyway, very interesting, very wild. I hope you've enjoyed this very strange video and that me putting it out into the world has had some benefit for you. I really would like to know if any of this resonates, please, I would, I would love a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. And if you feel like you do anything like this in your personal practice at all. And it, like, it doesn't have to be as in depth or as, as detailed. It can be like, if there's no right or wrong, your practice is your practice. <laughs> and if it works for you, then you're doing great. And, you're, and if it feels right, and it's something that just happens naturally, you're allowed to, you know, give it permission and space to be special the way it is, just the way it is. It doesn't need to look like the way other people say things look. So again, the reason I went into so much detail is to let you know that it doesn't have to look a specific way. It doesn't have to look like it's written in the books. It doesn't have to look the way someone on YouTube says it does. It can look like anything. Your places that you go, literally the whole world is out there. You can go anywhere. These are just mine. <laughs> so, so yeah. Sky is the limit. Sky isn't even the limit. You can go past the sky. <laughs> there is no limit. So anyway, I'm curious. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope, I, I sincerely hope it's been beneficial. And with all my heart, thank you so much for being here. And I will see all of you fine people in my next video.